going on? Welcome back to Heavy Metal Models. You know it's no secret, AutoArt's been making some really beautiful high-end die casts over the past couple of years. They just seem to keep getting better at it. And once in a while they'll do a race car that just knocks me flat. That was definitely the case with this latest one. It's a Maserati MC12 and it is killer. Check it out. When you're looking at the Maserati MC12, you're looking at a reskinned Ferrari Enzo. But when you're staring at the track slaying MC12 GT1, you're looking at a car that all but owned the FIA GT1 class from 2005 to 2010, when this machine, the Vitaphone Racing number one car, took pilots Andrea Bertolini and Michael Bartels to a sixth championship for the team. Like its prototype, this model is an eyeful, as replicated by AutoArt in a spot-on turquoise and black paint scheme. Topped by high-end tamped-on and decal-based livery and sponsor art, the paint, under a protective clear coat, is lustrous and deep, and every inch of the model's sweeping surface is smooth and polished. It's also jammed with detailing, starting at the nose where a fine mesh metal screen is set into the car's low snout below a multi-process foil cloisonne. Above that, the complex headlights and clear covers hold court alongside a beautifully cast set of see-through louvers on the fender tops and a wickedly right grid of strakes and screens on the deck proper. Further back, the windscreen is a ripple-free sweep of clarity that leads back to the car's teardrop-shaped greenhouse and winged tail, all set above a stellar set of 12-spoke race wheels and Michelin tires. These really had me going. Not only do they spin freely, they feature steel discs and pass-through calipers, and all of the pieces are highly detailed, right to the distinctive cooling slats on the discs. Working from front to back is a blast on this one. The seams between the body and the opening doors and removable front and rear sections are good. And the finesse along the edges of the casting around the wheel wells and vents adds a lot to the car's presence on display. And the tiny locks on the rear deck, the screen in the tail, and the impeccable foil-based Maserati script and trident join trippy little LED lights, faux metal heat shields, and great exhausts out back. After a few moments of soaking all that in, you'll want to pull the front and rear off the car to scope out the details. Up front, the massive air ducts are screened and set in among flexible air tubes run to the brakes at each side and to the cockpit in the middle. Push down and the coilovers and struts do their best to keep the scuffed rubber tires and wheels aligned as the car travels downward and back up again. Below that, there's carbon fiber detailing and a sweet peek at the car's incredibly complex door hinge assembly. AutoArt includes a handy panel tool and I suggest you use it to pry those doors apart and have a look inside the Mazars gut. It's a remarkable place to visit and the black carbon floor, the roll cage and the spray textured race seat are only the beginning of a deep set of individually detailed elements starting with a dash wearing a sleeping digital display and indicator lights, a steering wheel almost good enough to be reviewed on its own and a center stack that's been marked up with signage and tiny faux unlit LEDs in front as well as cables run behind. I like the tall shifter for the six-speed manual and the trio of pedals under the stock-sourced dash. If there are modern racing engines being made better in the sub-$500 segment of 118th, I'd like to see them. The startling blue of the 6-liter V12's Maserati-badged cam covers and the satin metallic sheen of the block, transaxle, heads and headers are accented by fine-spun carbon fiber patterns on the airbox and walls. The added on wiring and cables, done in various gauges of flexible vinyl, top off a comprehensive power plant and an engine room that extends beyond what the eye can easily see. That's a hallmark of quality, as is the fully recreated and wildly entertaining rear suspension. Carbon look belly pan is flat, of course, but even here, AutoArt's gone a step farther by placing sharp metal skirts around the car's midsection and signing off with hand-lettered serial numbers. 
This is a magnificent model of a lion of a car and one that GT1 fans will be chasing for years to come. thing about auto art and it's one of the things that I just really enjoy about this maker. In an era where more and more manufacturers are coming out with resin models that display beautifully on the shelf mostly because their panel lines are so precise, this maker still manages to bring out full featured, fully functional die cast models that come really close to that standard of display. This is a stunning model car. You can pick up on it from across the room mostly because of the colors. Now that being said, I would love love to see this car in a non-liveried version, just a basic black or a basic white, just so I can appreciate the shape and the stance of this model. It's a fine piece. I want to give it four Henrys, a beautiful model car in any color. Hey, if there's a car you want to see on Heavy Metal Models, let me know, joe at heavymetalmodels.com. If I've got it here in the car room, I'll break it out. If I don't, I'll do my best to get it. If I can't, I'll let you know. Like us on the Facebook page, please, and please subscribe to us right here on the YouTube channel. I do read all of your comments and I'll do my best to respond to you as quickly as I can. Thanks a lot for coming down. You're the guys that make this show possible. We'll see you next time. Take care.